right now underway. Well, I'm putting on my helmet of beauty, as George calls it, because this is what makes me prettier <laughs> and gives me charisma points. So I'm getting ready to be on camera again. I do this because it makes me feel better, and I notice when I watch my videos again, I think, well, I should make some effort. So Brian and I are playing today at noon. We're Facebook streaming live, and at noon EDT, and that's every Sunday we've been doing that. And George and I spent the morning setting up a little area out behind the house to have the river in the background so that we can actually see the river behind us as we play music for about an hour. This is this is what I'm doing and we've set it up so Brian and I have to stand six feet apart from each other. This is my first interaction with another living being besides George and Charlie for a couple of weeks. Two weeks? Oh, I did go to the grocery store last week. So, but I didn't really talk to anybody and I stood six feet away from <laughs> checking my groceries, which is a story in itself. I took a cord and plugged it into the wall in the guest bedroom and ran it out the window where George stuffed some pillows and blankets so that the weather doesn't come in. The cord comes out. It's not a high dollar event. Oh, but look at this backdrop. That's where Brian and I will stand. During the week, Brian and I rehearse on Zoom or Facebook's video chat app, but it's a little hard to manage because there's quite a bit of latency. As time has gone by, I've come to realize more and more that my staying home is not strictly about my safety or my health. It's about the health of everyone I love. The difference I make staying at home is the best gift I can give to my community. And it's not just about having the virus, because I think eventually it'll be something like the flu we're all familiar with, or chicken pox, or something like that, where it's out there, you could contract it, but there are ways to combat it. But right now, there aren't. The ways we have to combat it are to steer clear of each other right now so the hospitals are not overwhelmed. There are so many exhausted and lonely healthcare workers out there. The least we can do is reduce the amount of work that we dump on them by steering clear of physical human contact. Yeah, we're going a little stir crazy. Yeah, your family's driving you nuts. Yeah, you're stuck at home a little more than you're comfortable being stuck at home. I think if we have the ability to do it, we have to stay at home. It means that many fewer ICU patients, that many fewer overwhelmed hospital workers, that many fewer EMTs who end up exposed. It's an easy enough thing to do. You might discover a hobby that you'd forgotten you were even interested in. And now I no longer have my helmet of beauty, and I have two extra charisma points. During this time, I have noticed myself being very curious about how other people are living. It's a little voyeuristic. I don't know, should I be a little ashamed of that? I'm not really. I keep looking at people's videos of them in their homes, especially celebrities. I look at celebrities in their homes and I think, well, they pretty much live like I do. You know, they're stuck inside. Maybe they have a switch that they can play games on or they have a big screen TV, but we have a wall and a projector. And maybe they don't live next to the river, so they don't have as much freedom to walk around as we do. I've been listening to a lot of Eckhart Tolle. I think that's how you say his name. And if you're not familiar with him, he's sort of a modern day philosopher. And he wrote the book, The Power of Now, which was really popular several years ago. And one of the things that he continues to encourage people to do is to be present. That's his main message, actually. So I'm working on being present. Worrying about getting sick isn't going to keep us healthy if we don't make any changes. And right now, we've been quarantining and washing hands and cleaning everything. Today will be my first interaction with another human being since last Sunday, and it's Brian, and we're really making an effort to make sure that we stand far enough apart that neither one of us infect the other one if we happen to be sick, which I doubt, but the virus has reached Westmoreland County, so an abundance of caution is not a bad thing. And we're doing okay. How is it doing dishes when we're in quarantine? Very much like doing dishes when we weren't in quarantine. 
that you were going to see that fast motion cleanup of this room. But I knocked over the camera about halfway through. Maybe not quite halfway through. I did, however, clean the desk. Sort of. Okay, it's better than it was. You can actually see there's desk underneath all of that. There's another thing that comes up when your entire world is in quarantine, and that is what to eat. My daughter sent me these a little while ago. I know they keep, but they are great. We made one of them the other night. Yes, cassoule beans are delicious. Yeah, they're really, really good. I'm a big food, canned food person, but you know, there are some canned foods that are pretty good. So let's see what's in the cabinet. Since I'm such a lurker, I like to know what's in other people's pantries. So I'm going to give you a look at my pantry. I get ragu. It's probably a little bit thinner than your usual pasta sauce, but I use it as a base and I suss it up. Onions and garlic and extra this and that. Sometimes I'll put some green peppers in there. And you never know. It's whatever's in the cabinet. Oh, diced tomatoes. More diced Hearts of palm. We're going to have to do something with that. <laughs> with that. Okay. Where are the black olives? Yeah, baby. Progresso soup. Ooh, we got a little surprise back here. Oh, tuna creations. Some tuna. Let's see what's got on the other. Oh, <laughs> this is what happens when you send your husband to the grocery store. <laughs> you know, this is the kind of thing that people put in those bags for um, the food pantry. I'm just gonna say, people. Nobody likes this stuff. I don't know what the syrup's doing on that floor of the building. We need to be on second floor. Got the pace, got the peats, got the franks. Very nice. It's got a kind of a, I don't know, I can't describe the flavor, but I just love it. Clearly, I love it. Okay. Honey, seen better days. Sorry, honey bear, you're a sugar bear now. Get the vodka next to the potatoes. That seems weirdly appropriate. I'm not sure what that's doing out. Oh, lonely banana. You're such a lonely banana. You must be in quarantine. You're the saddest fruit I've seen. Lonely banana. Oh, wait, not so lonely. Ancient Apple. Hello, lonely banana. I've come to keep you company. Oh, Ancient Apple. <laughs> Look, they just want to be together. Charlie and I are hanging out on the porch, watching the new house go up. I was just talking to my daughter about some of the things that we're dealing with, which aren't really very important in the grand scheme of things. But the big one for us right now is toilet paper. We're down to about, uh, I think we have two rolls of toilet paper. But we have backup boxes of Kleenex, and uh, I think I've got four boxes of Kleenex. Now we ordered some toilet paper online about uh, three weeks ago. It finally showed up. We um, went online looking for, you know, the classic whatever Charmin name brand that you buy here in the United States. and. Um, couldn't find any. They were all out. And if I would plug it in and say, oh, I'm going to have just to give me six rolls of this, and then it would come back saying, oh, well, you can't get it until July. And I thought, well, I, I think I'm going to need it before July. <laughs> so, so anyway, I went and bought some toilet paper from, uh, I think it's like a Chinese toilet paper 
manufacturer and I ordered what looked like eight rolls and I thought this is great 15 bucks eight rolls okay that sounds kind of high priced for toilet paper but you know we're paying a premium for needing toilet paper these days and the toilet paper arrives <laughs> this is what I got for my 15 bucks and my two and a half week wait but okay so uh, we got the uh, we got the two rolls remaining. We've got uh, four boxes of Kleenex. I've got the Chinese toilet paper. <laughs> I think it's made out of bamboo, which sounds earth friendly. Um, I got a stack of McDonald's napkins <laughs> that we stole from the McDonald's. <laughs> and if that runs out, I can always I can always use those mismatched socks. That's my biggest problem, honestly. Toilet paper, whatever. Oh, and touching my face. I don't think I touch my face all that much, but then I keep seeing images of me touching my face. Like, what is that? And then when I don't touch my face, I say, don't touch your face. All of a sudden my face itches all over. <laughs> all over, all the time. My nose itches, my chin itches, my cheek itches. I have to scratch my face. This is our life now. So my heart goes out to everybody that has bigger problems than what I've got. I wish you all well. Here goes some love. <laughs>